everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm recording in a different location today, so just want to give you guys a heads up. I have two little parakeets, so if you hear little tweets in the background, those are my babies. <laughs> so basically in today's video, I'm going to show you how I did these passion twists all by myself for $4. I only used about pretty much just one pack of hair, like one and some change, really. And I bought Kanekalon braiding hair, like the straight braiding hair. I'll go, I'll go get it for you guys. And curled it myself. Shout out to Loveth. I want to say it's Loveth Speaks. She came out with this idea or she's the idea that I saw that I got inspiration from. So I'm going to take you guys along the journey to show you how I did these passion twists. First off, whenever I do any type of braid style, I always wash the hair. So that's what we're going to do first. So like I mentioned, I'm starting out with two packs of expression braiding hair. You want to make sure to keep the rubber bands on because it just helps keep the hair more organized. So this is two packs of hair. I'm putting them in this clear drawer. It's one of those organization tower drawers. <laughs> and I'm going to fill it up with water and then add some white vinegar. I'm adding probably about half a cup. This really helps clean the hair, get off all of the chemicals. I'm also going in with my coconut milk and honey clarifying cleanser. You know, I talk about this cleanser all the time. I love it. It is a three-in-one cleanser, and it's great just for helping to clean and cleanse the hair. As I fill the water up, you'll notice that cloudy film that you see coming up. That is not the soap. That is actually the chemicals on the hair that they use to process the hair. And if you don't wash the hair off, these chemicals can irritate your scalp. So if that's happened to you in the past, that is why. You need to wash the hair first. So I washed it rinsed out the soap, then I'm going in with my Tresemme Luxurious Moisture Conditioner. I let that sit for a few hours, and then I'm going to rinse out each section one by one, and also just wring out any extra water. And once I have rinsed off each of the pieces, I'm just hanging them up using this hanger, and I'm going to hang it up in my bathroom to dry. It takes about probably like the full day to dry, so that's how I wash and prep the hair. Now, let me show you guys how I curl the hair. So now that the hair has dried, I'm now going to curl it using these foam hair rollers that I got from the dollar store. I'm going to separate the hair into small sections and start curling it on the little foam rollers. In the video from Love It Speak, she actually uses straws, but you know, I want to say the turtles. I'm not trying to use that many straws. So I just decided to use these foam rollers that I already had on hand. Once I've separated the section, then I'm going to start rolling it onto the foam roller. So I'm going to hold it towards the end of the section. As you can see, the ends are already tapered. And I'm going to wrap that section around in the same place about two or three times. And then as I roll down the foam roller, I'm gonna cover that section, basically securing it in place so that I don't have to put a pin there. And then I'm gonna roll down the rest of the foam roller. As you can see, I'm twisting my wrist as well as wrapping around the foam roller. This allows you to twist the hair individually as well as curling it around the roller, just giving it a tighter curl overall. Then once I get down to the end, I'm gonna wrap back up the foam roller. Another thing that I didn't mention is when you're wrapping down, you wanna leave enough space so that when you turn around and come back up, you can place the hair in those spaces in between. When you get to the end, you want to just wrap in place, same way I did at the beginning, and then I'm gonna use an actual hairpin this time to secure that section in place. So this is what it should look like when you're finished. I'm gonna show you one more time. So again, holding it towards the end of the section, wrapping it in place without moving down the foam roller. Then as you wrap down the foam roller with the section in the other hand, you're gonna cover that end piece, securing it in place so that you don't require two pins. Roll down the foam roller, leaving space in between so that when you turn back around and come up the fo foam roller, you're able to wrap in between the hair so all the hairs are individually uh, curled. So they'll all be really tightly curled by leaving that space in between. 
Like I mentioned in the previous video with Loveth, Loveth Speaks, she uses straws so it allows for a much tighter curl. But I found that with these foam rollers, you can get a pretty tight curl and it actually looks really natural. So I was really happy with the results. Again, once you get to the end, you're gonna stay in place and wrap that around, securing it and holding it in place with a hairpin. In total, I think I made about like 48 to 50 of these. <laughs> so I'm gonna put them right back into the little plastic container and then I'm gonna pour some hot water and this allows the hair to heat up and basically hold that curl pattern because this is synthetic hair. So when you heat it up, it'll take on that new shape of the roller. Once it's set for about 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to pour out the water and dry off the rollers. You want to make sure that the hair is completely dry before and, and also cooled down before you unravel it from the roller. And like I mentioned, I did about 48 to 50 just because I think I had uh, like 20 something to 30 braids and I used two pieces per braid. So you can adjust it based on how many twists you have and based on how thick you want your twist to be. Um, in the beginning, you can also use larger sections if you want to have larger pieces of hair to add to your twist. So this is what it looks like when I have unraveled it from the roller. A really nice spiral curl, just like that passion twist hair that costs six to eight dollars a pack, but for much cheaper. So after I have washed the hair, curled the hair, now it's time to actually braid the hair. And there's different ways to braid your passion twist. A lot of people like doing the rubber band method, but my roots and edges are too sensitive for that. Like I can hear them breaking off just thinking about doing the rubber band method. So I decided to do another method where you braid the base and then twist down to make the twist. And what the braid does is it locks it in at the root and helps to secure it in place without putting too much tension. Honestly, you can do it any way that you please if you would like to do the rubber band method. It is a little bit easier with parting and making sure you secure the roots. But like I said, if your edges and your roots are sensitive like mine, I would suggest this method. So now on to the actual twisting. As you can see, I have finished with most of my hair. I only have this top section left. So I'm gonna go ahead and part the front section off. Now, like I mentioned, I'm braiding the base of my twist and then I will start twisting down the section. Before I do that, I'm going and kind of teasing out the hair a little bit. I do this because my natural hair is pretty thick. So if I don't tease it, you can definitely see the transition from where my natural hair ends and then the extension hair is left over towards the end of the twist going back I think I probably would have teased it even more just so I had more uniform twists throughout then I'm gonna take two sections and overlap them just a little bit at the base next I'm gonna separate my hair into three sections I'm gonna take that middle section and put it towards the back so that it's out of the way I'm gonna take the sections that I have brought together place them under the section, bring that metal, middle section down. I'm gonna do maybe two or three rows of a braid, and then I'm gonna switch to twisting. And it's kind of trial and error about how to start your twist and which sections to combine. Sometimes I'll start twisting and realize that the hair doesn't really wanna go that way. So I'll go back and either split the section or combine it with the other section just so that it lays flat. There are some people who will do more rows of braids, like maybe five or six rows of braids before they start twisting, but I like it to be as seamless as possible. So I only do about two or three. Now I'm going to go in with my clear eco style gel and add that to the section just to kind of lay down some of the flyaways. Um, also, because I'm doing this on freshly washed hair, I don't want my hair to expand <laughs> as much as it normally does. So once I finish the twist, I'm going to twist it back and secure it in this little bun that I've created. 
If you've seen my two strand twist tutorial, I'm basically doing the same thing that I do when I use uh, put in twist on just my natural hair, where if I leave the twist down, it will definitely start getting frizzy and puff up a lot more. And in this case, make it look way more obvious that I've added extension hair to the twist. Now moving on to the next section, I'm going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to tease out the two sections of braiding hair that I'm going to add. I'm going to separate my hair into three sections, putting that middle part towards the back so that it's out of the way. And then I will do the two to three uh, rows of braids and then switch to twists. And again, you can add more than two pieces to your twist um, if you prefer. For me, because my natural hair is already so thick, if I tend to use a lot of braiding hair, my braids or twist ends up being really heavy and really bulky to the point that I can't even really put my hair in a bun and it's just way too much tension on my scalp. So I try and use as little extra extension hair as possible and still make it look natural. Also, just to give you guys an idea, it probably took me in total about four and a half hours to twist my hair, but the prep time definitely takes a lot of time. So the curling of the hair probably took about two hours of twisting and waiting for it to set in the hot water just because I wasn't sure how many sections I needed. And so I kept having to go back and retwist and re-dip them in the hot water. So if you kind of have an idea of how many twists you're going to do in the beginning, it's a lot easier to just prep those twists and curl the hair ahead of time. Also, like I mentioned, I use a pack and a little bit of another pack to do these twists. So really two packs should suffice. But like I said, if you're wanting thicker twists, definitely it may take you may end up using a little bit more. Also, do not cut the hair in half because once you curl it, the hair shrinks and you end up with very, very small and short twists. So I would recommend just keeping it the entire length. Once I've secured that last twist down in place, of course, you guys know if you've seen my other videos, I have to lay down my baby hairs because a style is not complete if the baby hairs are not laid. <laughs> So I'm going in with a little bit of water, some gel, and this designated toothbrush for my baby hairs and basically laying them down in place. Once I finish this, I'm going to add my scarf and go to sleep. Finally. I don't know if you guys can tell how heavy my eyes are at this point. <laughs> it's like 2 in the morning and I definitely have to be up and at the hospital the next morning. So uh, not sure how great of an idea it was to start on this so late. <laughs> So that's it. That's how I installed the hair. These are the final results. This has actually been a week that I have had these in. As you can see, my hair is getting a little bit frizzy, but it kind of just goes with the style because it is more of a twist style. I think one downside of twisting the hair yourself instead of buying the pre-made passion twist hair is that over time the curls do kind of loosen up at the end. Uh, but what I've been doing is just cutting them so that they're even. So like if one curl gets more stretched out, I just cut it to make it even. You could recurl it and dip it back in hot water and that would also do the same thing. But for me, I kind of wanted I wanted a protective style that was also affordable. I didn't want to pay six to eight dollars per pack for passion twist hair. Um, but I will recommend if you are going to do this to take your time and just do everything on different days. Don't try and do everything at once, especially if you're going to wash the hair and curl the hair. Make it like one day you wash, another day you curl, another day you install because it is a lot of work. It doesn't take a lot of time to install, but the whole prep process takes a long time <laughs> but overall I really love the results so that is it that is how I did my passion DIY passion twists for a 
$4. If you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe. I have some other videos coming soon. I know my video uploads is kind of sporadic, but I try and do what I can. So go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss my next upload. As always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next one.